Michael, we certainly uh, have never seen a, a more publicly corrupted Supreme Court justice than Clarence Thomas in that he actually ruled on a case about uh, communications that could involve his wife's communications, perhaps knowing that his wife was in constant communication with Mark Meadows. You are totally right, Lawrence. Uh, Ginny Thomas, I'm sad to say, is an influence peddler. Do you think anyone would return her calls if she was not married to an incumbent justice of the Supreme Court? Do you think uh, Donald Trump would have given her audiences if she were not married to Clarence Thomas and uh, had access to all sorts of private information about what was going on secretly on the Supreme Court? That's what those texts that you're talking about suggest, which is that she talked to people and she said, you know, I have some idea. Uh, of what might happen if something came to the Supreme Court. Who told her that? We presume it was her husband. We do not know. If she is going to testify before the J January 6th committee in the House, which I totally applaud if this is for real, she can't take marital privilege and say, I'm not going to say a word about anything that my husband said to me or I said to him. She's got to tell everything for us to air this. And Dahlia, uh, one of her texts to Mark Meadows, uh, she said, uh, about trying to overturn the election result. There are no rules in war. Uh, it's hard to think of, of, a, uh, of, of a more criminal kind of statement that you could make in that situation. I mean, clearly, it is absolutely amply clear that she was all in for the project of simply setting aside uh, the election result because, as she said in those texts, to Mark Meadows, the Biden family needed to be tried on barges outside of Guantanamo. I mean, in her worldview, which is a kind of creepy QAnon conspiracy theory worldview, uh, Biden was somehow so corrupt uh, that anything, anything was justified. But I think the deeper issue really is that knowing about those texts, knowing about her involvement, Clarence Thomas continued to sit on cases that had to do with this election. And that's the real issue. Her conduct is not in his control. What is in his control is that he, I think, had a vested interest in the outcome of those cases, didn't disclose it, and still continues to not recuse. Michael, uh, you know the history of vice presidents in public disagreement with their presidents better than I do. But I know it uh, enough. I, don't know. I, I know it enough to know that there have been many public disagreements between vice presidents and presidents uh, in our history for issues much smaller than the president asking the vice president to commit a crime. And here is right. Mike Pence staying absolutely silent uh, for over a month when Donald Trump is publicly insisting that Mike Pence has a power on January 6th that he does not have. Right. Uh, all of our friends watching us tonight, please do not canonize Mike Pence. At the last second, he did the right thing. But before that, for four years, he lionized and sucked up to Donald Trump, licensed him in all sorts of offenses against democracy, encouraged him to do the kind of things that led to the insurrection of January 6th. And until the 6th of January, he was a silent accessory to a president who was running a diabolical plot to fix the 2020 election against the will of the voters. No president in history has ever done that before. It almost cost us our democracy.